So welcome everyone. For those who don't know me, my name's Andrew Squillari. Um, I'm very grateful that a lot of you guys do know me and uh, a lot of you uh, I regard as very, very good friends. So my friends call me Squid, so I'd prefer if you didn't call me Squid, to be honest, because there's too many Andrews in the room and around, so um, I like Squid. But um, thank you very much for travelling uh, some people a short distance and some people quite a distance to attend tonight. Um, who's um, enjoyed the evening so far? And that's exactly why I do it this way, because I enjoy these evenings like this as well. I do like the social aspect of what we do with Daxi and the Daxi community. Um, I like having a meal and getting to meet people and having a wine or two, not three, because I usually do talking. Who knows what I'm going to say if I have three wines. But um, it's great. I'm very grateful that you've travelled to come tonight, and um, I'm very excited to see so many new faces in the room. And I'm very excited to introduce three very special people in the Daxi um, company, to be honest. Um, Ed Ludbrook uh, is someone that I uh, seeked out uh, six years ago, and um, I'm the type of person that likes to shake the hand of the person I'm actually going to be giving money. So I flew over to New Zealand for a coffee, and we've been very good friends ever since. And um, to be honest, when Ed talked to me about the Daxi um, vision, which is what he's going to talk about tonight, um, th nearly four years ago, I was in straight away. I didn't get involved with Daxi because I knew Bitcoin was going to 60, 70, 80k. Because um, at that point I didn't think Bitcoin would get to $1,000, so it's gone a bit since then. But I got involved with Daxi because I liked the vision of allowing my friends, you guys, to get involved with startup opportunities safely. And more importantly for me, the startup opportunity is not getting taken over by their investors or their investor base. So I like that aspect both. So I could see straight away that Ed had the capacity to deliver that program and we have delivered it very well. And I'm even more excited to introduce um, Ian Lowe, our new general manager, and uh, Chris Tyson as well, because those guys there, they're very special in their special wealth creation industry and developing um, digital companies which is where we're moving to. We're moving away from what we've been doing. We've been you know, mucking around a little bit with this crypto stuff, Bitcoin and Litecoin, we've been just mucking around, you know. It's been a good story. Who, who liked the story of Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum for the last couple of years? Yeah, it's pretty good. But what we're evolving into with this thing called the Daxi coin is really exciting. And that's where I could see our conversation four years ago becoming what we are doing tomorrow and for the next six months, the next six years, the next 60 years. So um, I'm very grateful for the friendships I've developed with you guys in the community. I'm very grateful for my friendship with Ed and giving me the opportunity to allow my experience in crypto to be given to you guys pretty much freely for so long and have the opportunity to have Daxi dinners like this all over Australia. and. Um, I want to continue doing that uh, for you guys and helping your family, friends and people you've up and come in contact with to see what we're really doing with this thing called cryptocurrency. So no more further ado from me, I'm going to invite the owner and founder of Daxi Australia just to talk a bit more about the Daxi vision and where we're going with the Daxi coin and the Daxi company globally. Welcome Ed. Tweedledee. <laughs> I get to be Tweedledum. <laughs> cool. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> A lot of people around Australia want to see all of Ed. <laughs> You're going to have the next dance. <laughs> so, actually, good evening, everyone. How are you? Come on. Good evening everyone, how are you? I had fish and chips, it was really nice. The, um, oh look, for me it's a joy to be here actually. For, for, for a Kiwi locked in New Zealand for, uh, what is it, 14, 15 months I think it's been since I've been back to Australia. 
Um, it's glorious. The fact that it's I've been married for 30 years is really the fact that I've been overseas all the time. So to spend the longest period in, in my history with her was and finally get a chance to run away is, is, is excellent. She's overjoyed and thanks you. Thanks you for the invitation that you've made to me. Uh, no, look, it's also fantastic as far as we're concerned. Um, there's a number of you here that I've known for a while, yeah? Yep. Yep. And a couple of years ago, um, you heard me or Squared or, or, or someone in the Daxi world talk to you about the opportunities in the space, and they came true. That's the best part. Okay, they came true. And, and and um, as we experienced in Cairns, it's, it's very important for us that what we say has some validity, that what we say isn't just good logic or common sense, that they eventually delivers. And, um, and so for us, um, no one is, was more overjoyed when Bitcoin first, but then the other cryptos broke their sort of all-time highs and have raced off in the marketplace and, uh, and, and knowing the impact that that will have on a lot of people who have trusted what we've said over the last few years and therefore also for, 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 for some of you who have also talked to the people that you know, your friends and family and based on that relationship, based on the logic, they have also joined the Daxi world, they have also put money in that was important to them. When people say to me, oh, are you talking about money you can afford to lose? I go, absolutely not. That's the sort of advice you give to someone before they go in a casino, right? Yeah. For us, it has always been, we want you to look at the money you can't afford to lose. The stuff that's really important for you. The stuff that you actually want to grow because it's going to give you that wealth, that security, that lifestyle, that freedom that uh, wealth does. And therefore, when, when you do that with us, we take it very seriously, which is why those of you that have known us for a while realize how serious we are when it comes to security, when it is to relationships, to customer service, to how the organization operates. We, we operate different than every other exchange that we know of in the crypto world, not just in Australia, also around the world. And so we do that for a very specific reason. We do that because there is a space where this industry is going where it will evolve now and to, to have any credibility in that space you have to have proven yourself with people and so for us this has been a matter of us as an organization proving to you that we're an organization that you would trust that we are worthy of your trust and if you know anything about that you know, you know that that's not something that you can spruik, okay? It's some, not something that you prove over a few hours, it's something that you prove over months, you prove it over the experience that other people have. And people always ask me about my background, as you can hear, I'm a Kiwi, but when I was 17 years old, I got sent to the Royal Military College Duntroon in Canberra, Australia. I spent four years there with Queenslanders, Tasmanians, and Victorians and uh, also a few South Australians and and what happened was um, I, I feel as though I got to know uh, the Australian world um, more than you normally would experience there was only a we were there's only 10 Kiwis and 150 Australians so I learned how to take the piss out of Australians in a way that in a way that you would want to be able to do but I also understood the differences between different states, right? You know, there's a difference between North Queenslanders and South Queenslanders and Victorians and West Australians and anyone who says that there isn't doesn't know this country. Would you agree? Yes. And so, um, so for me, I've always felt very comfortable here. My brother and sister are both traders and have become Australians. The, um, they haven't they haven't dumped the All Blacks completely, but I suspect that'll be coming. Maybe their children will. 
No, but for me, I have always had this. Uh, this, I, I believe I have an understanding and a feeling for Australia, and 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 also I have an understanding of how this market operates. And I, I know that you have to be pretty straight up. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Queensland, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And uh, and I think we've done a pretty good job at that, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully you feel that we haven't sort of tried to hype this market up. It doesn't really work. The market is sort of hypes itself. You know, sometimes you want to put a little bit of a a bit of a rationality on a on a quite an irrational marketplace. But for us, it's always been, and I think that was the important thing when it, when it's come with with Toyota Squid. Um, for me, it's always been a matter of just really understanding where this marketplace is going. And so, for us as a company. What you have seen is the first stage of our business. Now that we've got to a point where the marketplace has broken and we've gone into this new hyperbolic growth of, of cryptocurrencies, for us the market will change. And because it will change, we have to change as an organisation. And that's why I have with me the new uh, leadership team for, uh, for Australia. Because it's something that you need different skills and need a different understanding of how this market will evolve. Because cryptocurrency has been developed by people who are primarily either traders, so they understand how to trade these markets, or they're gamblers. And then buying Bitcoin is like literally putting 500 bucks on red. <laughs> Yeah, they don't really understand it, which is why they talk about the money they're going to lose. But that is not its future, when you actually understand where this marketplace is going to. And for me, I was fortunate enough that in May the 26th, 19, uh, 2017, I was in New York at a crypto conference, the big one in the world. And I was fortunate enough the day after that conference to attend a, a new conference where they showed for the first time ever at a conference how you could tokenize or digitize assets like property, like shares, like patents, like art, like cars, like anything. And there was, it was, I went to the first ever token summit. And I sat there, and I don't think most people really got what was happening. I looked at that and went, holy hell, bugger the cryptocurrencies, this thing is enormous. Okay? And it was especially, I, I looked at it and, the, and it sort of allowed me to, to talk about and really believe that we were able to create and solve this innovation problem through the solution that I like the best, which is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is fantastic. To understand, if you have a great idea, you're based in Brizzy, you got this fantastic idea as far as dental or whatever it is, okay? If you go to a venture capitalist or a, or a private equity or an angel fund, they own you. Do you understand? They own you. They don't give you enough money and they own you. And it's all your ideas and all your effort and it's all your risk, but they own you. So the idea of crowdfunding where you get the money, but they don't own you, to me, is fantastic because I hate being owned. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> like, especially if you know anything about building a business or developing it, you take all the risk, you take the efforts, you're the, you're the people doing 100 hours a week, and for someone to walk in and own you simply because they have some money, in a world awash with money, is total bollocks. Would you agree? Yeah. And so it didn't work, and I saw in this technology the ability to really change the world. Okay? But I also knew it would take time. And what would happen with this market, it would go first a wave around cryptocurrencies. And that was a really cool opportunity for people like you, who are new to this technology and maybe don't have the confidence or the professional understanding to understand digitized property. But at least it can get you into the game, get you started into this, into this space. So, for me, I've always, and, and those of you that remember the early days, where's Leanne, uh, you know, you know, the, those of us that, that right at the start, I used to talk about it. 
And everyone used to go, wow, that's so fascinating, Edward. And when you, when you launch it, I think I'll get involved. <laughs> and we go, no, 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 get involved now. So we stop talking about it. But it's always been part of our vision. Do you understand that? It's always been part of our vision. For us, it's always been part of the next stage. And so for us at the moment, what's happened is the crypto market has finally evolved to a point where it has credibility. A year ago, two years ago, three years ago, if you talk to someone about crypto, they would go, ooh, Really, Edward? Really? Do you think it has a future? Really? You don't think it's just another one of your crazy ideas? Do you understand? And you have to justify yourself. Now I do the hug. If someone goes, if they say, oh, what do you do? You know, I'm in crypto. And they say, oh, well, really, Edward? Do you think it has a future? I just give them a hug and I just go, it must be horrible being you. <laughs> And that's really changed in the last few weeks. Yes. Okay? Absolutely. I've had more people or friends and family that I know have asked me about crypto in the last few weeks than in the previous five years. So what that tells me is now is the time to evolve to the next level. Because at the moment we have 100 people in this room. How many people should we have? 10,000, right? And the only reason we don't is because we haven't just had the right things, you know, emotionally people have struggled with their confidence, they're worried if someone goes, ooh, you know, it's crazy, but now you have no excuse. Would you agree? Yeah. And there's some of you who have just arrived, know nothing about crypto, is going, oh my God, what's happening? What are you, what have you dragged me to? I don't want to be confronting. But I do want you, I do want you to now understand that if you're excited about this market and you weren't three months ago, six months ago, it actually means you're normal, all right? The people that weren't normal are the few of us that joined a little bit earlier, all right? So you're normal, but the key thing is that your timing, your timing as far as joining this space is actually perfect. Do you know that? Because yeah. what's happening is a next wave. All the young millennial traders are already in. Do you understand that? All, that, all those sort of 33 year olds who haven't had a shave for four days, who spend crazy money on jeans that are already ripped, yeah. all right? <laughs> those guys and girls are already in crypto. They have never, ever, ever being the target for this company. From the day I joined, I looked at this and I understood that this is a credible, investable asset class that will be around in 2030 and 2040. Because the technology is just makes it a smart way to buy property and shares and all that sort of stuff. Does anyone understand that? Yeah? yeah. And therefore, I knew that this industry would, would start in trading, would start in speculation, but eventually will end up in the wealth industry. Does everyone understand that? Super wealth. So people like you buying this stuff, people that you know buying these assets because it's going to be good for their wealth over the long term. And that's why we pioneered a portfolio product. Because if you talk to anyone about, about what's the smart way of building wealth, you buy a portfolio. portfolio. All right? When we started this, you know, when we started that, that product, there weren't portfolio products in this industry. But for us, it made absolute sense. It made sense for us to, to have a level of education that no other company in the world has the education that we have. And we do that because our market has a few more grey hairs than the other <laughs> company's market. 
<laughs> All right. When I tell people that our the average age of of our people is, is more than 30s, they look at me crazily. But in reality, that is the wealth market because the older people have all the wealth, right? Yeah. And so, for us in Australia, the next evolution of our business is in the wealth market. And for to have a business that can really deal with the requirements of regulation, Okay, to, to have a platform that is simpler, smarter, but can deal with these other different products in a way that you can understand. And so to do that, we have to have an Australia that is really designed for Australia. Does everyone understand that? And that's why, and that's why I knew that it was time for us as a company to start to add a leadership team that knows how to do that. And that's why, and that's why, um, and that's why Ian and Chris uh, are now part and the leadership for this environment because they know how to do this stuff miles better than I would ever know. Okay, and the point is, is they are able to use the platform, the foundation that we have built over the last three years, and to and to exploit what is this incredible opportunity. All right. Yeah. And then after the cryptocurrency thing, well, then we'll get into the tokenization, then we'll get into the innovation funding. Now people always ask me about the Daxi coin. Our business is not the Daxi coin. Do you understand that? Okay, the Daxi coin is a part of the, the, the feature that makes our business work. Hello? And so what happens is I find that people, they just focus on us about the coin. The reason why it has value is because we are pioneering one of the world's biggest niches. We are not trying to be the mass market. We are not trying to be Facebook. Our interest is to be a niche like LinkedIn. Do you all understand that? So first you saw Facebook and then out of nowhere, came this unusual business that was in a niche which then just so happened to be huge because the market was huge. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now to make that happen, okay, to make that happen we need a cryptocurrency because if you're going to build, so what we first have to do is we have to build a global network of platforms. Daxi Australia, Daxi New Zealand, Daxi Singapore, Daxi Japan, Daxi Poland, Daxi Dubai, Daxi Brazil, Daxi Germany, Daxi UK. Do you understand? Yep. And over the next 12 months, we will launch literally somewhere between 50 and 150 of these platforms. Do you understand? We have been working on the technology and the strategy to do that for over three years. It is not an accident. It's not some idea that I've just pulled out of my backside. All right, it is part of the original strategy that I came up with in June 2017 when I saw that tokenization opportunity. And what makes it work is the fact that you, let's say you have a friend who has a, a dental tech opportunity in Brisbane, what makes it work is that instead of them trying to raise money in, in Brisbane, Okay, what happens is that they're now using the blockchain and our own cryptocurrency, they are able to send money from Mexico, from Poland, from South Africa. Does everyone understand that? They can do it simply, cheaply, securely, quickly, so that organization that's out in, out in Brisbane is not controlled by some venture capitalist okay or anything like that they control their future but they can raise money like a Silicon Valley entrepreneur could across the world and that is the promise of this technology and to do that you need to have a coin your own coin that allows you to send value but also to pay for those blockchain fees okay for those of you that are not clear on crypto you won't understand a lot of what I'm saying but those people that do understand crypto, nod your head. 
Okay, so if you don't understand crypto, these other guys understand, all right? <laughs> and go and talk to them to really, un really appreciate the value of that. At the moment, the hottest coins on the planet, the ones that are creating the boom, are infrastructure coins, these blockchain coins. And unlike nearly all of them, except for the, the actually the, the number two, number three in the world, what they have is the technology, but what they don't have is also the marketing organization. We have the technology and the marketing organization to be able to do that. And that's why for us, our focus and our confidence is that that asset that we're creating within the Daxi world has the potential to become a top 50 cryptocurrency. Okay? It's not some spruken Kiwi doing a tap dance to get you excited. In reality, we're not doing the major promotion on that coin anymore, and we never did. We never took it globally and said, hey, who wants to buy the Daxi coin? We never did that. The vast majority of people who own coins in Australia live in Queensland. <laughs> okay? It's like we've punished New South Wales. <laughs> we've especially, we haven't ignored Victoria, we haven't ignored Victoria. It's, it's, it's just you didn't get it. <laughs> but for us, it was never a matter of turning around and offering these coins around the world. We never had to. We never had to. Well, for us, it's always been a key part of our organisation. But for us now, we have to make sure that that coin is successful as far as what's called liquidity. And for us, it means we must list on external exchanges. But what you need to understand, if you have a coin, do you, if, if you have Daxi coins, raise your hands. Lots of you. Okay. You've got to understand this. If you know anything about crypto, have a look and you'll find most of, nearly all of the new coins, they go along like this, then suddenly liquidity in the market catches their eyes and they go like this. Okay? And if you don't know that, get someone to show you. You'll see coin after coin after coin after coin. They go along like this, then they, then they go bang and they grow anything from five to 50 times. And that's because, it should be because, is you have the credible story, which we have. Very few companies in the world have the story that we have that isn't already a huge coin. But the other thing you've got to have is liquidity. And what liquidity is, is it means that you have the buyers and the sellers creating the volume on exchanges. Does everyone understand that? Yeah? So if you can imagine, if, imagine for you to have liquidity, you had to be launched as a share, you had to be launched on the ASX. But to get on the ASX, you had to launch on the Brisbane Stock Exchange, which was a lot smaller than the ASX. But to get on the, the Brisbane Stock Exchange, you had to launch on the Noosa Stock Exchange, which only had a few guys with you know, short pants and just hanging around. Do you understand? Yeah. Stage one. Stage two, stage three. Well, people don't understand is the crypto market is exactly the same. So we have to go through these stages. So the first stage is literally today, UK time, we list on a small exchange. And for us, it's great, right? Because we finally listed on an external exchange. <laughs> But if you, if you sell on that exchange, you deserve to have someone slap you very, very hard. <laughs> I need to call your mother to so much so she puts you over her knee and gives you a proper spanking because it means you have not listened to what I said. That, that exchange is just where we start. Do you understand? Yeah. And that is where we learn and prove and the other next level exchanges, they are looking at us to make sure that we know what we're doing. But we have already got agreement from tier two exchanges. And tier two exchanges are at least 10 times the size of a tier one exchange. 
and literally only 3% of the 9,500 listed coins in the world, only 3% get on a tier 2. And we have an agreement from four. Okay, and it's taken me months and it's cost a fortune to be able to do that, that they have looked at us and they understand that we're going to take this thing really seriously. But it's going to take time to list on those exchanges and create the sort of volume on that marketplace so they're interested in what they're doing. Do you understand? Yes. Hello, do you understand? Yes. I'm sorry to sound like a teacher, but I, I just... After last night, some of the questions I got, it was like, drove us crazy, right? It was like, and the point is, is that, so it's going to take us time to do that. But once you've done that, you prove yourself, and all the other exchanges, especially the big boys, then the big boys are interested in you, and they have tens of millions of traders. They are ten times the size of even these ones. Do you understand? And so what happens, sorry, that's a bit annoying. I won't do that again. <laughs> the point is, is that then you have real liquidity and then you have the chance for your coin to undertake that sort of exponential growth. And I just don't want you to be that person who likes sold Bitcoin at $2,000. Do you know what I mean? You meet them and they go, oh, I sold my Bitcoin at $2,000. And you just want to give them a hug. And so, do you know what I mean? You just go, oh, bad luck. And I don't want to say that to you. Would you agree? Yeah. I don't want to say that to you, especially when you took your time to come out and listen to me. I understand the people who are watching this and, and are not paying attention or who can't even be stuffed watching this. But for you guys, you have no excuse. Yeah? yeah? You have no excuse. You should be going, right. That's no problem because today also we launched our vault and it gives you the ability to lock your coins up for six months and earn an interest rate when after what you just heard me, if you did anything with your coins in the next six months, you've got to be an idiot anyway. Am I allowed to say idiot? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. You just did, we know. What's that? Oops, I just did. I was told I wasn't allowed to say idiot. The, um, but you've got to be a bit crazy, right? Would you agree? Yeah. So the point is for us is that I hope if you have coins, you put them in the vault. It just got launched today. The only thing you need to make sure of is this. You need to make sure uh, that, that you move quickly because we only have a set number of coins that we're prepared to pay all this extra free money on. Okay? And so you need to act. Some people have already done it, yeah? Yeah. Some people have already done it. The senior people have already done it for some reason, okay? The point is you need to, you need to, need to put your coins in the vault simply because for you to get the true value, you've got to do that. And if, if you, what are you going to do even if you did some, what would you, what, where are you going to put them that has the better potential? You can't name one. And if you can name one, tell me, all right? Because I'm always looking for something interesting. But the point is with us, where we're at, First thing you need to understand is that our coin is just fundamental to our organisation. It has a massive use case. We've been working on the technology and the market system to be able to drive that opportunity for a very, very long time. Secondly, like it is, the listing process has three stages. It, it will take till the end of this year, if not, to the, if not into next year, to really have the value. Most people I know are just saying, OK, I'm going to forget about it for 12 months. All right, simply because the, when you get the opportunity, when you're as lucky as you are to know that, that this has the potential to go to there, you know it's just going to take some time. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Otherwise, you're just talking about a casino, and we are not that. We will never, ever, ever think like that, act like that as an organization. Does everyone understand me? Yeah.